In this video, we are diving deeper into Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0's effects, clearly displaying the effects available over multiple different connected devices so that you can have a look at each of the effects for yourself. Hey guys, James from TechLens here, and this video is actually additional content from the main channel video where we critically analyze Gigabyte RGB Fusion's features, UI, bugs, everything. I'll have that linked in the video description if you haven't seen it already. But there is one thing that I need to stress before we continue with this video. There is going to be a lot of flashing lights. It's just the nature of showing you all the effects within Gigabyte by RGB Fusion. So if you're at all affected by that adversely, if you're going to be physically or mentally affected by this, please consider not watching this video because the last thing that I want is for anybody to, I don't know, end up in hospital or adversely affected by watching a YouTube video. That just seems stupid. So guys, stay safe. Let's have a look at the effects. So as mentioned before, we're using Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0 version B21.0. 0520.1. There we go. And as a recap for the lighting, all of the RGB fans are connected to one addressable RGB header, which is also connected to this RGB strip so that you can get good visual representation of the effect because sometimes it's a bit difficult to see what's going on with fans just because of how they light. So this lighting strip will show you what the effect actually looks like in a digital RGB strip. This strip is a non-addressable RGB strip that's connected to a non-addressable header. So you're gonna have essentially a couple different lighting zones, which is the closed loop liquid cooler and this strip, the RGB fans and this strip, and then this strip and this strip, and then the GPU and the memory are also their own devices being controlled through Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0. So this is the main screen. This is the effect that's currently running at the moment. It's the color cycle that's being synced between the GPU motherboard and memory. So going through the effects, you have static, which of course is a single color, no effect, just bright lights. Now you can change the static to any color that you want using either the predefined colors here, and you can also change the RGB value. Now the hex color code doesn't work at all. If I change this to say FE, um, which should be more of like a pinky bluish sort of thing. Um, there's no way to get that to update. But what you can do is you can change the hex color code value. So this will be a pinky purple um, and you have to hit enter right there. But changing that does nothing. You can change the brightness as well. You have 10 different brightness levels. This is quite similar to a lot of other effects. If it has brightness control, it has 10 different levels of brightness control. Now a bug that I've observed again here is that it's not updating the G-Skill memory with brightness control. If you have speed control, there are six different speeds as well between the highest and lowest, but of course you don't have that in static. Where you do have that is pulse. One thing that you'll notice is something that I like to call stepping within the software is how smooth is the transition between, because if you imagine these RGB strips, uh, they're outputting a value, and one of those values is opacity, which gives you brightness control. So full opacity is full brightness, zero opacity is completely off. So there needs to be a transition between 100% and zero. Now what this is doing is more like stepping between 100%, 90%, 80%, 70%, and it's giving you that staircase effect. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's not very good. Okay, so moving on to Flash. Flash is exactly as you would imagine it to be, although it does its RGB headers and connected devices out of sync. So double flash is exactly as you would imagine it to be. It's flashing twice. Um, with flash and double flash, you get speed and brightness controls as well. So if we crank that up. There we go. And then color cycle is like a non-addressable RGB color cycle. It basically updates every LED at the same time, telling it to change color, whether it's addressable or non-addressable. Remember the RGB strip right there at the top is addressable and this one is non-addressable to give you a better visual representation of how the effect is being, being manipulated on the strip. So if we move over to music, which is probably the most embarrassing effect that I've ever seen. So speed and brightness you don't get anymore, but what you do get is a sample rate and sensitivity. Realistically, you want the sample rate really quite high so that it's constantly asking what my RGB value should be. And then sensitivity I would play around with, but honestly, it's gonna be the worst experience that you've, you've ever heard. So I have the digital rights to be able to use this song, so Let's play this. Okay. 
It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's try refreshing that. Oh, there we go. Now you've come alive. Now, this is an incredibly depressing effect. It's nice that you get a color cycle so they can change between different colors, but it's, a, I would not be able to tell you that that's to the music. It looks like it's doing something that is completely unrelated to the music. And also the lag behind it, like I, hopefully you can hear this click. Three, two, one. That is the delay. It's like a solid second. Yeah, that's awful. That is an embarrassment. Like that's not a music effect if it's not reacting to the music in real time at least. I mean, God, all right, moving on to random because that one's stupid. So random is like a flash of a connected ARGB or RGB device. Um, it's not particularly exciting, but it's, it's something. Anyway, game, the games in the list, CSGO, Project Cars. So let's, let's, try, let's try another game. Let's see if it will work on something else. Although Project Cars and even more so CSGO are very popular games, I think that's just a very limiting effect for the amount of people that would actually use it. Cool, and we'll change it back to color cycle. Now the thing with these effects is that they're synchronized between all the devices, so it comes with some limitations because some of these devices may not have addressable headers, etc. And that's why you're limited to this collection of effects. But if you click into one of these, say the motherboard, you'll then be able to access all of its ARGB or RGB components here by clicking on them. So let's take a look at the non-addressable RGB effects. Of course you have static like you did before. You'll be able to change the color, change the brightness. Um, you won't be able to set the hex values because Gigabyte Fusion RGB, sure, why not? Um, you also have the pulse. There we go. Flash. Double flash and color cycle. Their color cycle is actually quite smooth with the non-addressable RGB strips. It, it's quite a nice fade between one color to another and I, I will commend Gigabyte for that. So if we go back over to the digital RGB strips and we'll use this one as a good demonstration because you'll be able to see what's happening on the RGB strip as well as inside the case on the fans. So for all of these effects, you won't be able to define how many LEDs are in the lighting channel. And what that means is that when you say, let's have a look at digital E, you'll see on the RGB strip that the effect meets right there and then it resets. That looks terrible on the fans, even though the fans are connected as a daisy chain, but because of the way that they loop around and where the effect actually resets, it, it doesn't look great at all. So let's go through these effects and have a look at which ones look good and which ones don't, and what you can do with them. So I'm gonna go over static, pulse, flash, double flash, color cycle, we've seen all of them. Digital wave is the addressable RGB wave, which is really slow on mid speed. Wow, let's crank that down. That looks like it's basically stopped. Okay. Let's crank that up. So remember you have six speed settings. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So higher speed. That's incredibly fast. Okay, let's change that down a bit. All right, what speed would I be happy with? Probably somewhere in between there. That looks super slow. And then one up from there is super fast. This is, Okay, cool. Um, calibration and everything we, we would have spoken about before in the separate part in the usability. I'm not going to cover the usability stuff, um, but I, I will just cover the effects in, the, in this section. So digital A. Okay, so this is digital A. It's a single LED being lit up and passed down the strip. And most of these effects reset at the 20th LED. So you'll see as this is coming down at LED number 20, it'll introduce another LED. So this doesn't look too bad on the fans and on the inside of the case. Um, the inside of the case is, is a good one to look at, but the fans are gonna be the most noticeable. You can change the color of this effect, of course, but you can't do, say, like multicolored on that one. And speed at the moment is mid, and I guarantee this is gonna be ridiculous. Wow, okay, yeah. Let's, let's just put the speed in middle. Digital B, let's move on to that. 
So what digital B is, is the same as digital A, but it has more of a trailing light effect between like going down the strip on the LEDs. Um, still looks pretty terrible on the fans. Digital C, what is this? Um, it's like a bouncing effect going one way than the other. That speed is midway. Let's change that up. Wow, okay, no. Um, speed right down. And that's just, that's, that is jumping as you see it. That looks terrible. Um, moving on. So this is changing colors, filling up a strip. Okay, this actually looks pretty good on the RGB fans because they are daisy chained together. So that effect is flowing between them. But because it's resetting on the 20th LED, it still doesn't look great in my opinion. What I really would like to have is it configured so that I can tell the software that maybe there's 90 LEDs in this strip and then it will do that effect to fill up all of the fans in sequence and then unfill them in sequence etc but because Gigabyte RGB Fusion kind of works on a 20 LED effect and then just duplicates that along the strip it's kind of filling them all up at the same time at different sections on the fan so it doesn't again doesn't look particularly great Okay, Digital E. So instead of the effect going the same way the entire time, Digital E is having the effect meet on the 20th LED. So what I'm assuming here is that it's spanning 40 LEDs meeting at the 20th, starting at LED number one and LED number 40. Again, speed, color, brightness, control, all of that good stuff. We'll change that over to like a blue right here. Digital F, let's go. What is this one doing? Okay, so at the 20th LED, it's changing the LED's color in the effect and sending a new LED down the strip. And it looks like it speeds up with every new LED placed in its static sort of stack. This doesn't look too bad on the RGB fans, actually. This is probably one of the nicer effects that I've seen so far. Digital G. Wow, that is a seizure. That is less than half speed. Um, <laughs> So I think I described this as a rainbow seizure. If we change the speed down to the slowest and change the speed up to the highest. Wow, that's too much. Okay, moving on. So this is the same as digital F, but it's a single color that you define. So this one, you don't get color control. Whereas digital H, yeah, this one. You do get color control. So we can change that over to a green. And it will start the effect again. There we go. And then it will fill up that section. And I do believe this also speeds up as a new LED is placed. There we go, speed, 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 reset. Cool. Digital I, the last one here. There we go. So digital I is actually the same as digital G. But instead of it being a rainbow cycle, you get to choose your seizure color, let's just say. So if we change that over to blue. So I'd be very tempted to just leave that all as color cycle. So this is the G-Skill Trident Z Neos that we have installed. Now, static, pulse, flash, color cycle, default. All of these are exactly what you think they are based on what we've already seen with the Gigabyte RGB Fusion software. What I think default is, is default based on the hardware because this effect is kind of the default G-Skill Trident Z Neo effect, which I think actually looks quite good. So we're gonna leave it on that. Color cycle is basically a non-addressable RGB color cycle. Flash is like that. One nice thing to note, at least with the G-Skill Trident Z RGB Neo, is that you can set different colors per module, let's say, like that. And have that as a pulse, we can do the same. Although you can't do that with default. So we will leave that on default. So we will quickly have a look at the GPU. Although, as I said before, these effects may differ depending on the GPU that you have installed. But pulse, flash, double flash, color cycle, and intelligent. You know what these are based on what you've already seen. And intelligent is a visual representation of the temperature of the sensor that you're actually controlling. So you have GPU, GPU usage. So GPU temperature, GPU usage, and GPU fan RPM. There we go. Most people, I think, would have that on GPU temperature. No brightness, no speed control. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you haven't checked out the main Tech Lens channel, please do so in the video description. Otherwise, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one.